Hello there, Ray here, and I'm joined by Ping Yu, one of the Protech members, and today we'd like to show you a modified version of Cade's Perimeter Maker. The machine consists of a two-way flying machine which will duplicate TNT and drop it downwards onto the blocks below which will destroy them. Then it also has a holding bay which will initially push it down one meter at a time. This was first built up by Cades and then Pingyu came in here and compacted it and Comet came in and made it more efficient by spacing it out. On the back side we have bumpers which the TNT duplicators will bump up against and this will send them back the other direction. These designs were made by Comet and this will allow them to be uh, two way and then they come into their holding bay. The machine will sit in the holding bay until it is ready for it to take off again. Here we have a two-way flying machine that Pingyu made which allows us to make a lot of delay very easily. And what this machine will do is that when it's activated it will fly upwards and it will go up into it reaches this um, returning part here. And this segment here will return the flying machine and it will also set itself down one meter as well. This way it's really easy to make a lot of delay. So after the delay system will return, this will give enough time for the sweepers to be back in Tolling Bay. Then the TNT dupers are sent off again. Then a short delay later, then the water sweepers down below will also be sent off. This way the water sweepers aren't in the way of the TNT coming down and destroying them. Now this is the same type of water sweeper that we have shown earlier. I'll link it down in the description that Pingyu and I designed. And here they come along and get bumped up against the same type of bumpers and they get returned to their holding station for the next round to occur. So here I have an example of the machines working. We got some blocks set aside where the TNT will come down and destroy. And if they ever run into liquids, like you can see there is liquids in your normal world, then eventually they will get destroyed. So the TNT is coming by and destroy the top blocks that are exposed. And then the water sweepers will come by and remove any of the water sources or liquid sources. It could be lava as well. And this works with the timing so that once this machine returns to its holding station, it can then be sent off again, and that's why we have that long delay up above. The TNT duplicators are all sent at the same time. This way we can ensure that all the TNT reaches the bottom at the same time all the water sweepers are pushed at the same time. That way we don't have a water sweeper that gets too close to the TNT and gets destroyed. Now in this example here, I made a small example so we can easily see it reaching both sides. But you can make this as wide and as long as you want, as long as it's in loaded uh, entity processing chunks. Because the TNT can destroy this machine back here, we need to first keep the machine kind of far back so it doesn't destroy it. We obviously don't want to send off the water sweepers until the TNT has uh, moved far enough out so that it doesn't cause any damage to it. We also have to make sure we stop the TNT explosions before they get too close to these bumpers which will send back the sweepers. So once they get so close we will prevent them from duping as we have the bouncers or the bumpers up there for the TNT dupers closer than we have the ones down here. That way the TNT is just outside of the range so it's not able to destroy this observer here. And because the TNT does not destroy all the blocks we need to come ahead and remove the blocks in this area before sending this machine into here. Otherwise the machine will continue to move downwards but eventually run into these blocks that the TNT hasn't removed. So we went ahead and we removed 8 meters worth of blocks in here. This gives room for those blocks as well as all the blocks surrounding this bumper device that we send back the sweeper. And on this side here we want to remove 10 meters worth of blocks. This gives enough room so that the TNT doesn't have to be close enough to destroy these as well as the machine itself can move down into this area without having to run into any blocks. On the sides here we have 3 meters worth of blocks removed. This prevents any liquids of opposite types from touching each other and creating cobblestone or stone. This would create a generating machine and this would break it since uh, blocks would be removed by the machine and then the Cobble generator would create more and then the machine is not made for that. And also, um, same goes for this side here. We also got the same thing to prevent that from occurring. Now it is possible that if you had a water source in here where you were mining out, that you would eventually come to a situation where a lava source and a water source may touch. And this normally occurs if there's like a lava or water source above and then down below in the ground a little ways there is a lava source and the water accidentally blows up and it goes down like a cave and eventually finds this lava source and creates obsidian. And this would break the contraption since TNT cannot destroy blocks such as obsidian. Now because of this reason you want to go ahead and remove immovable blocks like obsidian ahead of time. Mostly you'll find these down at the lava level because there's a lot of cases where there is lava being created and then there is caves which will accidentally send water down into the lava level and create this obsidian and that can be avoided by removing that ahead of time. 
But there's always these cases, like I said, where the water will happen to find these obsidians and break them. The best way to avoid obsidian occurring inside of the area that you're trying to destroy the blocks in is to remove any lava sources that are kind of isolated by itself. And then when you get down towards the lava level, you want to go ahead and remove any water sources that are kind of close to the lava. So pretty much you're trying to put as much distance between the water sources, such as like the lakes, from the lava lakes that are down below. And it's a good thing to observe the machine working because there may still be a case where obsidian was generated. And this way, if you're watching it, you'll see it coming up to the surface and you can remove it before it breaks the machine. The TNT duper as well as the water sweeper will inch down meter by meter, slowly removing all the blocks in your entire perimeter. And using this, you can easily remove the majority of the blocks, seeing as you first did some preparation. Once the perimeter maker has reached the bedrock level, it will try to remove the blocks within the bedrock, but the sweepers themselves won't be able to go any lower, so they will eventually crash. But the TNT duplicators can code down more. As long as there's no liquids in there, they can continue to removing the blocks inside the bedrock and doing a pretty good job at cleaning it up. So I would recommend if you would want to remove the blocks inside the bedrock to continue to letting the TNT dupe and destroy them, even if the water sweepers themselves will end up crashing into the bedrock as you can see like this. Getting all the unique components to work together took a lot of time and that's what I spent most of my time trying to do to get this all to work. And big thanks to people that helped me out such as Excel as well as Tan11 who tried early on to help me with the water sweeping timings as well as the TNT duplicating. And such as uh, Pingyu who came in and double checked some stuff with the slimestone. And Comet who came in and made sure that the spacing between the blocks was correct as well as the spacing between the TNT duplicating. This is a machine that we use on Protec to remove large amounts of land as well as liquids within them very easily. The way that we normally run it is that we'll have the player AFK inside of the center minecart and then we'll have it so that it is wide enough so that when the player is moving across you also load this, keeping the minecarts loaded as entity process chunks as well as the TNT below. One thing to keep in mind, if the player is inside the minecart and logs out, it will also remove the minecart. And since the minecart is needed for the contraption, it's best to put two minecarts in there. And that way if the player would leave, then the minecart is still in there and is used to butt it. Otherwise, when you log back in, it will reactivate this and it will update this TNT, breaking the segment here. But you would not want to log out with this machine running. You definitely want to make sure that it's stopped. So the way that I turn the machine on and off is just by removing this line block here. And this way when the machine moves down one meter, it'll try to pull this line block. It won't be able to pull it. So when I want to start the machine again, all I have to do is put this line block in again, and then you just power this piston down below and remove the power, and it'll start back up again. With a large limestone creation like this, one thing you do have to worry about is lightning strikes, which can cause fire, which can cause updates. So if lightning would strike like here, then it would create an update against this observer. So something like that you would want to keep in mind of. And in those cases, you want to avoid lightning, either sleeping away the nights or building this in a biome that lightning can't strike, such as a cold biome or a desert biome. Or go ahead and just put blocks over top of this to prevent lightning strikes from reaching it. Building this machine up in survival can be a bit tricky, especially with all the floating components and even like this one up here and a lot of precise block placing. Now what I highly recommend is before you actually run the machine is to make a world download of your world or have the server make a world download. That way you can keep it as a backup. And then always you can use the world downloader mod to take a copy of the area and then test it in single player and see if it works before actually running it on a server. If you would like to use the perimeter maker in your very own world, I will provide the world download in the description. Obviously you would want to make this quite a bit bigger if you want to do an entire perimeter. This build was a long time in the making, although we started building this last summer, we really kept making little tweaks and changes to it all throughout the year, and it finally got around to recording. Big thanks to everyone who helped design all these components, and you can find all their links down in the description. There you have it guys, a TNT duplicator with a water sweeper to make a perimeter maker. So if you found this interesting, show us with a like and share this with others. If you'd like to see more slimestone contraptions like this, subscribe and don't forget the bell button. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments. Bye bye.